Good evening, good evening everybody. Uh, it is an honor, a privilege to be doing this once again. It has been such a long time. Welcome to Worship Night. Yeah, yeah. Live and direct on your screen, wherever you're watching from. It's a TV, it's a tablet, it's a phone. We are there worshiping right there with you. So as we begin, I just want to start by saying our God is in charge, in control, and He is reigning supreme even in this time. He is the Alpha and He is the Omega. He is the beginning and He is the end. And I'd invite you to just worship along with us, which is feel free, be at ease, you are in your space. So see God is with us, even as we are through the screen. Two, three are gathered, even virtually. He is there in our midst. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Forever and ever, Lord, we ascribe all authority to you. Lord God, we thank you that you are a God who is in control. Regardless of whatever we face, whatever situation we find ourselves in, God, you are always fully in control. Lord, you have all authority. You are seated on your throne on high, O oh God. But more importantly, God, we thank you that in addition, that you are a God who is close. You are present. You are here. You are Emmanuel. That you are God with us. You're not far removed from the things that we go through, but you know them personally. You know us personally. And you desire for us to know you personally. So God, in this space, in this time and in this place, Lord, we pray that everybody who is watching, everybody who is engaging from their screen, oh God, would feel your tangible presence right where you are, right where they are. That God, they would feel your embrace even in their homes. Lord, you are the beginning. You are the end. And we thank you that we can come to you with that knowledge. One more time, let's sing. Jina la koni Jehovah, Jehovah, Jehovah. Where when the way? Wana, wana. Do not coop up, mamlaka, mamlaka, mamlaka. Midele, midele. In Jesus' name, we have just begun in praise and worship. Amen. And everybody here said, Amen. 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 Amen and Amen. Yo, again. Welcome to Digital Worship Night. <laughs> this is the part where you guys cheer. <laughs> we trust that you're engaging with us as well. It is such a privilege and honor to be worshiping our great God with you. And you know, you may be watching and you're asking yourself, what is worship? And worship is simply a response to a revelation that we have of God. 
So for example, God is great, God is holy, God is magnificent. So what do we do? We ascribe all these attributes to Him. We just tell Him, God, you are good, you are holy, you are magnificent, you are present, you are faithful. So we can put our faith in you. So that's what we do. So as is customary with every worship night, I give some ground rules. Somebody say ground rules. Ground rules. So rule number one. As we're singing to God, we are actually praying. So what that means is our songs are our prayers to God. They're to give you vocabulary as you interact with your Heavenly Father, basically. So don't wait for a special prayer time. As we're singing, as we're worshiping, please pray along with us wherever you are. Second ground rule. God is here. Engage with Him. I know this is all fancy and everything. We're in studio. We sound all nice. The band plays really, really well. <laughs> there's a lot going on. There's cameras, there's lights, but you are here to engage with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So even as all this is going on, don't be distracted. God is here, engage with Him. And there is liberty in God's presence. I mean, you're in your house, so if you want to lay prostrate on the carpet or on the cold floor perhaps, <laughs> you are free to do so. There is liberty in God's house. God is here. Engage with Him. And finally, last ground rule. God speaks through His Word. Listen and respond. So we won't have a sermon during this session that we have together. But we will be reading portions of Scripture. Now, some of this Scripture is powerful. Somebody say powerful. Powerful. So if something powerful is read and resonates with your very core, the appropriate response is... Amen. 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 So we're going to try this out. Our first scripture will be read by the lovely Nachesa. Psalm 36, verse 5 and verse 7. There you go. Your unfailing love, O Lord, is as vast as the heavens. Amen. Your faithfulness reaches beyond the clouds. Amen. Amen. How precious is your unfailing love, O oh God. Amen. All humanity finds shelter in the shadow of your wings. Amen. Amen. This is true. These are not our words. This is God speaking of himself. <laughs> All right, Isaiah 41.10, Miriam. So do not fear, for I am with you. Amen. Amen. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. Amen. I will strengthen you and help you. Amen. Amen. I will uphold you with the, my righteous right hand. Amen. Amen. And finally, Matthew 28, verse 20, the last part. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Amen. No, I think you need to say that one again. Say it yes. again. again. I will say, say it, it again. Camera, yes. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Amen. 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 Our God is faithful. So our response is to put our faith and our hope and our trust in Him. We believe in Him. And I pray that you believe in Him too. I know we're in tears, but you can uh, do the groove, do the shimmy like so. Very nice. Are you doing it with us? I hope you are. Do a nice Holy Ghost wave like so. Very nice. Here we go. Jehovah, you. I trust. I trust. In you. In you. Oh, Lord. Jehovah, you. I trust. I trust. In you. In you. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I trust, I trust in you, oh Lord, oh Lord, Jehovah you, I trust, I trust in you, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, you are the God of miracles, you are the God of I believe. 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 Put your hands together like so. We're going to take it. 
from the top. So join along with us. Jehovah, you I trust. I trust in you. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Jehovah, you I trust. I trust in you. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe you. I trust. I trust in you. You can get your praise dance on And it's okay if you're in your seat Here we go My struggle, bye bye. goodbye to my fears, yo. Bye bye. Good, 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 goodbye. Bye bye. Good, 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 goodbye. Bye bye. Good, 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 goodbye. Bye bye. Goodbye, fear. Bye bye. You're not welcome here. Bye bye, 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 you're the God of wonders. You are the God of wonders. You are the God of power for I believe. 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 Yes, we believe in you, Lord. And we celebrate you. It is in you that we live, move, and have our being. Amen. And it is for you that we live, O oh God. Our very lives are as sacrifices unto you. May our worship be a sweet smelling aroma unto you. It is you that we live for, Jesus. It is you that we dance for, Jesus. It is you that we sing for, Jesus. Are you ready to do some? <laughs> I know it feels awkward, but this still remains true. So we sing, it's you. It's you that I'm living for. It's you. It's you that I'm living for. It's you. It's you that I'm living for. It's you. Shining. 
is here with us we are declaring that our God is Emmanuel and he dwells in the praises of his people Amen. so even as we've sung as we've danced as we've lifted up our shouts of praise God is here with us scripture puts it this way Psalm 95 verse 1 to 7 come let us sing for joy to the Lord let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation and you can say amen yeah. Amen. <laughs> Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. Why? For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the mountain peaks belong to him. Amen. The sea is his for he made it and his hands formed the dry land. And this is our response to his greatness. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our God, our maker. For he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture. The flock under his care. Today, if you would only hear his voice. For God is great. And he is deserving of all praise. But more than that, we are his sheep in his hand. And he cares for each and every one of us. For such a faithful God, I will keep saying our reasonable response is to put our faith in Him, is to put our trust in Him, and to worship Him. And worship is simply putting God in His rightful place in our lives. So Lord, we worship You today. Receive our worship, O oh God.
rush through this moment because I sense that where you are engaging with us that you are worshiping in your own way this loving heavenly father who's right there with you so even as the instruments continue to play before we move on I want to just let us linger and give you the opportunity to raise up worship in your own words to this God so right where you are just begin to open your mouth and in your own words, start to love on God. Start to tell God that you are worthy of every praise that I can give you. The Lord, you are greater than any situation that I'm currently facing, oh God. Whether good or bad. Lord, we worship you, which means we put you in your rightful place. This is our response to our revelation of you, oh God. The Lord, you are good, so we will treat you accordingly. The Lord, you are powerful, so Lord, we can trust that you are mighty to save. The Lord, you are faithful, so we can put our faith in you, God. Lord, you are loving. You are loving. You are love personified. And there's nothing that can separate us from your love, O oh God. In fact, scripture puts it this way. Romans 8.35 says, Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? No. Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or even threatened with death? No. No. Because despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ. Through Christ who loved us. Now I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. This amen. is a good place to say amen. Amen. Neither death nor life. Amen. Neither angels nor demons. Amen. Neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Amen. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. Amen. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God Amen. that is revealed in our in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. 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 Indeed, God is love and nothing can ever separate us from the love of God. And if you think about it, then it means that whatever you go through, whether persecution, whether hunger, whether famine, whether distress, whatever it is that you're going through, that God is right there with you. The fact that you may be going through a hard time at this point does not mean that God has left you. In fact, all the more he is closer to you even now. So we just want to celebrate his presence. Because I don't know about the people in your life. Maybe there are people who have walked out on you. But this is not a God who does that. This is a God who is ever present in any time of trouble. That includes trouble that we ourselves have put ourselves in. He is an ever present help in time of trouble. So Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your presence. And we celebrate your presence. And our response to your presence is to allow you to take full control of whatever we are going through. You are here, Lord. You are here. Have your way, O oh God. Have your way, Jesus. your way 
Lord, I love the fact that nothing phases you, that you are secure on your throne, Jesus. We invite you to take control of all of our spaces, God. Because, Lord, your plans are far greater than any plan we could ever have for ourselves. And I know this truth to be true. Even when I can't see it, you're working. Even when I can't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I can't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I can see it, you're working. Even when I can feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I can see it, you're working. Even when I can feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop. Working. Even when, even when I can see it, you're working. Even when I can feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop. One more time, we declare. Even when I can see it, you're working. Even when I can feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Take control. You know, I love the words of that song. We are asking God to take control here and now. It's not that God is not in control. God is already in control. But we want to be aware. We want to personally give him the space to reign, personally take the space uh, to do work in our lives. You know, a quick scan of our nation, a quick scan of Africa, uh, the ends of the earth, really, you realize that you don't know who's in control. Uh, we don't think our government is in control. Otherwise, they know the number of days we need to go before this lockdown is over. You know, when you look at the states, you don't see the government there in control. We don't think the institutions are in control, really. Uh, when you look around, even the church, uh, uh, we are not in control. It leads you to point to ask yourself, so who's in control? Who's in charge? Who's making the sun to rise up, uh, the, sun, the moon to come, uh, the night? night to give way uh, uh, to light. Who's doing all that? The book of Psalms chapter 11, verse 4 tells us this, that the Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord is on his heavenly throne. He observes everyone on the earth. His eyes examine them. It points us to someone who's in control. It points us to Jesus, our Lord, telling us that that, 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 that one, Oh man, he's in control. He's still in his place. COVID has not knocked him off uh, his throne. COVID has not made him to have social distancing with his responsibilities and work of our lives. And so our first prayer tonight uh, is to, uh, to allow us, wherever we are, to go back to that place of saying, Lord, take control. Some of us are businessmen. It's saying, Lord, give me the wisdom to be a steward under you because you're really in control. I just manage under you. It's for fathers to come back and say, Lord, take control of my family. It's for mothers and for sons and daughters to say, take control. It's for people who are working to say, take control. Because the people who are over us, they have the authority, but they don't have the control. And so the first prayer today, could you just go back and Lord and say, Lord, take control. Lord, I want to thank you for that woman for that man. I want to thank you for that family that is gathered around their laptop or their TV or around whichever gadget just listening to you. And today, Lord, tonight, my Father, I want to ask that you'll take control. Take control uh, over their lives. Take control of their financial provision. Take control over their marriage. Take control over that business. Take control of our nation. Take control of our security apparatus in this nation, oh God. Take control. Take control. 
And so let me ask you to sing that one that song one more time. But this time, yes, you are saying take control, but you are becoming aware and you are calling him to take control over those things that you've been wanting to take control over. You've been wanting to take control of your relationship, but right now you are saying, Lord, take control. You've been wanting to take control over your provision. You're saying, Lord, take control. You've been wanting to take control over your security and over your protection, but you're giving back control to whom it rightly belongs. Why? The Lord is still on his throne. Come on, let's sing that song one more time. Ask him to take control right now. Take control here and now. Yes. Take control. And you're asking him to take control because even when you can't see his working. Even when you doubt it, he's still working. Now we pursue on in this prayer. And here's a point, guys. If, if you f- even feel like I'm distracting you from your moment of prayer, you can mute the device, uh, but have your moment with the Lord. Now, now that you've seen that the Lord is in control, that Jesus is in control, what does he require of us? I'd like to point us to the book of Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9, verse 9. Matthew, the writer of the book of Matthew is telling us his own account of how Jesus invited him in. Uh, Jesus is in control. So what does he want to do with us? Matthew chapter 9, verse 9 says this. As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at a tax collector's booth. Follow me, he told him. And Matthew got up and followed him. Now who are the tax collectors? Because Matthew was a tax collector. Tax collectors were, were, were people who used to collect tax on behalf of the Roman government. They were Jews, but they were employed by the Roman government in Jerusalem and the, the surrounding areas to collect tax on behalf of the Romans. Now, you need to understand that at this point, Jerusalem, uh, uh, the Jews were a colony of the Romans. And so the tax collectors were viewed as sellout politically. Why? They were working for the oppressor. But then number two, they were, they were dirty spiritually. How? Part of what they had to do was to work with Gentiles. They had to work with people who were of questionable characters. And so they were viewed as dirty spiritually because Jews had no relations with Gentiles. Not only that, but they were also corrupt morally. You see, nobody knew how much a tax collector was supposed to collect. And so they would collect what was needed for the Roman government, and then they would collect over and above that, which made their pay cut. And so because of that, they became increasingly, increasingly wealthy, but, but they corrupted their morals in so doing. But I want you to see what happens in this story. Matthew is giving us his story. Matthew is giving us his perspective. And he says this, as Jesus went on from there, he saw a man. He saw a man with a name, Matthew, sitting at a tax collector's booth. Now, Jesus didn't see a tax collector. Jesus didn't see a morally impure man. Jesus didn't see an adulterer. The Bible tells us, Matthew tells us his own account that Jesus saw a man. I want to put it out to you today that Jesus is still in the business of seeing men. Jesus is still in the business of seeing women, of seeing you. He knows your name, a man named Matthew, a woman named Lydia, a man named John. A woman named Jacinta, he still sees you. Jesus does not see you in your present circumstances and present problems and issues. He sees you in your future, in your glorified future. And if you accept it, he would still see you today. Because yes, he's in control. But he's not so caught up trying to help the world figure out COVID that he forgets you. He still sees a man, still sees a woman. Yes, in the wrong place, in a tax collector's booth, but he sees you. That God sees you today. I want you to go back to that place of allowing the Lord to see you. What are some of the things that you've been going through that you're saying, Lord, I know you can see me, but I'm waking up in the wrong bed. I know you can see me, but I'm, ha- 
hung up on the wrong drink. I know you can't see me, but I'm hung up in the wrong mentality. The Lord is able to see that thing that is disturbing you, but he doesn't call you according to it. He calls you according to your name, a name that he gave you, and according to who you are at your core, your humanity. Lord, thank you for that man, for that woman, for that son, for that daughter who's been called an adulterer, who's been called an alcoholic and a drunk, that person who's been called a, 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 a deceiver and a conniver, that person who's been called, um, you know, a gossiper. But today, tonight, you tell us that you see us for who we are. You see a man with a name, sitting in the wrong place, yes, but with a name. And so, Lord, we thank you that you restore to us our dignity. You restore to us our humanness. And you want to have a relationship with us. This is what the Lord told Matthew. He told him, follow me. And the Bible tells us that Matthew got up and followed him. You see, Jesus is still telling you, yes, he's seeing you. He's seeing your condition, but he's saying, follow me. And all of Matthew's life, all of Matthew's before and after is pegged on this verse right here that Matthew got up and followed him. You see, when Jesus calls you, you always rise up. Oh, man. You could be in the Marie clay, but you rise up. You could be in depression, but you rise up. You could be in a financial situation, but the Lord calls you and you rise up. Would you rise up today and follow him? Because Matthew could have been, yes, Jesus could have seen him as a man. You could have seen him sitting at the, at, the, at, the, at the tax collector's booth. You could have seen him with a name, but you could have said, follow me. But if Matthew didn't rise up and have traction and start following Jesus, nothing would have changed. And so in the next moment, as you sing this song, I want you to go before the Lord and say, I want to follow you at the core of my heart. I want to follow you from the core of my being. Well, hey Lord, I will follow. I don't know where we are leading. I don't know where I'm going in the next season, but I'll follow you. I will follow you, oh God. I'm following you from the depth of my heart. I don't know what to do with my children, but I'll follow you. I don't know what to do with my husband, but I'll follow you. I don't know what to do with my job, but I'll follow you. No, I will follow. Father, thank you that you never stop working. We could be in doubt, we could be in pain, we could be in joy, yes, but you never stop working. Through COVID, through isolation, through all these seasons, Lord, you never stop working. So guys, I want you to track with me. Number one, we said that God is in control. He has not lost his control. He's still on his throne. Number two, we've said that he sees a man. He sees a woman, man, and he says, follow me. And if you're willing tonight, it could be the day, you know, your, your, your before and after could be today. Uh, you could be walking out of this worship night today, knowing that your life is changed for good. Like Matthew, you could rise up. Uh, when Luke tells us the same story, the book of Luke tells us this, that Matthew rose up, left everything and followed Jesus. I want you to know that tonight you can leave everything and follow Jesus. Man, you can look back and say it's nothing compared with what I'm receiving. The wealth, the fame, the things that you're chasing today are nothing compared with what you receive. A pile of gift price. We receive joy. We receive peace that surpasses human understanding. We receive joy, righteousness. Man, the things you receive when you're in the Lord are nothing compared with anything that you could leave behind. And so tonight, rise up and follow him. But I want you to say something that Matthew did. Ah, oh, Matthew, while Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, apparently he follows Jesus into his house. How awesome is that? 
many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners. Somehow, Matthew follows Jesus. And, and, and he's not following Jesus alone. He takes this opportunity to invite his fellow tax collectors. And the Bible says, many tax collectors and sinners came to eat with him. You know, I've been a believer for a while. And I, I, I'm going to be honest. Many times when you, we, when you receive Christ, we always tell our friends, the people used to party with, we will tell them, you know, goodbye, see you later, or maybe not later because you're going to be burning in hell, and we leave them. But Matthew tells them this. He, he, he actually takes the opportunity that because now he has a relationship with Jesus, he calls his friends and he says, hey, not see you later, but see him better. Or see the Son of Man better. See my Savior better. And he invites them in. Most of us are hoping that Corona will end and the COVID season will end, the, the isolation will end so that you can go back to church. I want to tell you that maybe that's a wrong perspective. I hope you're praying that the season will end so that you can invite a bunch of sinners into your house. Why? So that they can see him better. That's why you follow him. That's why you have a relationship with him. That people around you can say, because of Kevin having a relationship with Jesus, I have a relationship with Jesus as well. Are you there tonight? Are there some people you need to invite in? Your brothers, your sisters, your neighbors, your neighborhood. Who is eating in your house because you have a relationship with Jesus? Now, I'm not saying hang out with non-believers so that you can partake in what they do. I'm not saying go to the club and burn it. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying be intentional about it. Bring them in but point them upwards. Could you pray for that person you know is an unbeliever tonight? And maybe, just maybe, the Lord said, church closed, at least in that sense of institutional, you know, gathering, so that you could gather some people in your home. Who's going to be a believer this year because you stayed at home? Who's going to be a believer this year or have a better relationship with Jesus this year? Because you are the church. You are the person who's supposed to say, hey, I know him. I'm following him. See him better. Oh Lord, I want to thank you for that family that has been burning with passion for their neighborhood. For that son who's been burning with passion for their schoolmates. For that woman who's been burning with passion for her ladies' chama group. For that man who's been burning with passion for, her, for his drinking buddies group that they may know you, that they may have a relationship with you, that we can learn from Matthew, that it's not the healthy who need a physician, it's the sick who need a doctor. And we admit we are sick, oh God, and we need you. And more than that, Lord, we are bringing other patients into you, a space where you can heal, where you can minister, where you can revive, where you can lift up, oh God that our neighborhood can be different in this season. Lord, that, that our schools can be different in this season. And Lord, as people gather in smaller places, that people can lift up others to see you for who you are. To see you for who you are, oh God. And so we bless your holy name. Oh Lord, have your way in our homes. We bow down, Lord. You are here in our homes, in our offices, Lord. As we bow down, you are here. You are here now. Have your way. As we bow down, you are here. You are here now. Have your way. As we 
good to know that even when our institutions that lead don't seem to be in control, our God is still in control. It's good to know that. Now, I hope you're tracking with me. Number one, he's in control, man. He's not caught up with, you know, you know all what... He's, he's able to travel even though, you know, passenger travel is not there. He's able to move. He's not confined by time, distance, or, you know, geographical positioning. But number two, he wants to have a relationship with us. Matthew, follow me. With you, not with your condition or with you at a personal level. He wants to change that. But he's not just changing you. He's saying, I want to have a relationship with you so that you can do the same for people around you. And then something interesting in that scripture that you read, he says that I desire mercy, not sacrifice. That Jesus desires for us to be merciful with people around us, not sacrificial in a sense. Not, you know, he's, he's, he's not asking you to do the things, you know, don't, you know, leave other people in terms of sacrifice them. Why? He is the perfect sacrifice. Every worship night we share together in the community to remind us that he sacrificed so that you can be able to be merciful and gracious with people around us. Now, if you're new to this uh, 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 communion, communion usually has two elements and I want to encourage you to take something in your home and partake with us. Uh, to be honest, communion was part of a meal. So if you don't have juice or bread, you can take ugali, you can take tea, you can take even water. As far as you say, now this is the bread of Christ, this is the body of Christ, and this is the blood of Christ. If you have some elements that you can say that as in your home, I encourage you to take them so that you can be able to share in this uh, communion. His body, the Bible says, uh, was beaten and bruised. It was scarred and beaten, shredded to pieces so that ours could be whole. So wherever there is sickness today, I want to believe for healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Someone who's been having headaches, uh, that cancer, that lupus. Uh, I see uh, that disease that has been plaguing you tonight. Uh, AIDS and uh, COVID, I believe uh, this body was bruised and beaten. So that ours can be whole. Not only that, that he shed his blood. So that this is the blood of the new covenant. We are under a new covenant. We're going to live forever. Why? Our sins are forgiven. Oh, this is good stuff right here. This is the good news. And so, Jesus says, take this as often as you can in remembrance of me. Or as you take this, remember me. And so, forever we are, fathers, mothers, children, I want to invite you to take the body together with me. The Bible says that likewise after dinner, he took the cup, gave thanks, and says, this is the blood of the new covenant. Take in as often as you can to call me affectionately into remembrance. Or as you take it, remember me. Isn't it amazing that the Lord takes a meal to be the symbol of remembering him, of communing with him? Could we take the cup? Oh, I love that you're in homes and so we can have generous portions. Uh, I hope it's refreshing for you as it is for me. He is in control. He's not left his space of control. Number two, he wants to have a personal relationship with you. Why? He's loving, he's caring. He wants to know you. But he also wants to be known by your friends. He is relational. He's inviting you. And so I want to invite us in to uh, uh, share in this, uh, uh, co co continue singing songs and praying and raising his name high as we continue with the worship night. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your love, for your presence, that you are in control and that you see us not for the situations that we find ourselves in but Lord you see us as men and women 
as your own, as image bearers made in your image. That's what you see. And I thank you that you call it out. And much like God is calling out, calling us out of where we are to where he wants us to be, that is the essence of blessing. A word spoken over you that will move you forward in your God-given destiny. And we find a blessing in scripture that we're going to sing over ourselves and over you who's watching. It's a priestly blessing. You may have heard it sometimes referred to as a benediction. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord turn his face towards you. May the Lord be gracious to you and may he give you peace. And may this blessing follow you and your children to a thousand generations. This is what we are singing over you, God's people. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face towards you and give you peace. One, a kubariki, na akulinde, na kuangazie uso wake, na kukufadili, akuinuli. Say amen. Which means let it be so. favor be upon you. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations in your family and your children and their children and their children. Yeah. 
invite you, you know the powerful thing about those words, especially that word, Amen. It means let it be. So even as we continue to just uh, uh, hum this uh, song, I'll invite the band just to play softly. What are those things that you want God to just stamp on it and say, let it be. Let it be. Let it be. What prayers do you have in this moment, in this season, that you're saying, God, I invite you, let it be. Are there breakthroughs that you've been waiting for for such a long time and you want to say and declare right now, let it be. Oh, life and death is in the power of the tongue. What are some of those things that you need to speak into your life right now and say, let it be according to God's will, according to God's plan. Is there someone who's in need of healing right now? As we've prayed, you're saying that, God, let it be that I will receive healing. Who is it that right now is in need of God to come through for you? Maybe it is financially. Maybe it is relationally. Whatever it is right now, you're saying, God, let it be according to your will. Who is it that right now you're praying for salvation for one of your family members or even your friends? And you're saying, God, right now, amen. Father, let it be. Let it be, oh God, we know as a church, Father, we've cried to you. We've called on your name. As individuals, Father, we've believed and trusted in you. And today, Father, we want to say that let it be according to your plan. Let it be according to your will. That, Father, may we be blessed to generations to come, oh God. Oh, Father, I know that I'm praying for myself also. And I say, let it be that even in a season like this, that generations to come, oh God, will declare of your goodness because of the great things that you have done through me and for me, oh Lord. 
and right now i know and right now this is a prophetic moment that some of us need to begin to speak prophetically over our lives in the name of jesus there's some things that need to come to an end there are some things that we have come to accept as normal in our lives and the Lord is saying that is not how I created or who I created you to be and today you need to speak over your life speak over your generation speak over your family right now in Jesus name and I invite you that wherever it is that you are as you're watching this do not tire in speaking prophetically over your life speak prophetically over your family speak prophetically over this nation there are many of us that the Lord has given you a burden for this nation and today i invite you right now to begin to proclaim the things that you want to see god do in this country oh god and today we worship you father and declare that father lord indeed let it be according to your will we declare that father no weapon that is formed against us will prosper so let it be according to your will oh father oh god we bless you lord we thank you jesus and we worship you for what you're doing even in this place tonight oh god Father, we thank you because in our homes, oh God, there's a move of the Holy Spirit that is happening right now. There's the power of the Lord that is moving across families right now in Jesus' name. Oh God, I thank you because you're raising up spiritual villages across our cities and across our nation. Oh God, there's an anointing that is pouring right now in our country in the name of Jesus. But even as you're watching this, regardless of where you are right now, God is moving in your life. Will you allow him to move right now in the name of Jesus? Oh God, I pray that do not pass me by. Do not be caught up with distractions. But would you allow God to move in your life? To move in your life right now in the name of Jesus. Do you want to see sickness disappear? Declare over your life right now that let it be, oh God. Let it be, oh God, according to your will. I claim healing over my life in the name of Jesus. Oh God, I pray again against terminal illness in the name of Jesus. I pray for breakthroughs in my life. I pray again against addictions in my life in the name of Jesus. Somebody needs to call on the name of the Lord. Our God is here and He can hear your prayer and He can answer your prayer tonight in Jesus' name. So do not tire in waiting on the Lord tonight. Oh Father, we thank you. Amen. Amen, Lord. Oh God, let it be, Father. Amen, Lord. Amen, Lord. The word says that every knee will bow and every tongue confess that you are Lord. And Father, I want to pray and declare that each of us, Lord God, the whole world will declare that you are Lord. Father, I thank you that you send us to the ends of the earth, O oh God. And Father, you say it in Acts 1 that, Father, when the Spirit comes upon you, Lord, we will be your witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And right now I pray for us, O oh God, that, Lord, there are many of us, O oh Father, who need to learn, O oh Lord, even how to just spread forth your word. And even as we've spent time in prayer, God, we need to extend love, we need to extend mercy, we need to extend grace, to many, O oh Father, who are in need of this. And God, thank you that we have the opportunity to worship in our homes. That God, I'm glad that when you declare that your word will be spread out to the ends of the earth, O oh Father. That Lord, in Matthew 28, when you said, make disciples of all nations, teaching them and baptizing them. Oh God, I thank you because there is absolutely nothing that can stop you or hinder your word from being spread across the world. And Father, even in a pandemic like this, Father, we can still worship you in the comfort of our homes. So Lord, receive the praises of your people. <laughs> I pray that Father, in this place tonight, God, that Father, Lord, your name will be exalted on high, oh Father. And I am glad that we still have an opportunity, regardless of the limitations and the restrictions of life, we still have an opportunity to worship you. So God, may this become the thing that we do every day. May this become the thing, the, who we are every day in our families. And so I thank you, Lord. I thank you for the great opportunity we have to sit in your presence. And I want to pray that, Lord, that people at home have been blessed. That as you're watching me, you've been blessed. As you're watching us, we've been blessed. That as you've worshipped, as you've raised your hands in, in, in prayer and in praise, you have been blessed. Let this not just be another session, 
but let this be a moment that indeed you can say it was worthwhile. And so God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for who you are. We say that we love you. We say that we honor you, Lord. And help us that our lives will always be for you. And that Lord will bring glory to your name. So God, receive our praises. Receive our worship, oh God. Now God's people say, Amen and Amen. If you've been watching us from home, uh, it is our prayer and our desire that you have been blessed uh, tremendously. This has been an amazing time for us. Uh, uh, we've had such a wonderful time just worshiping God in this place uh, with the with the band, with the vocalist. Um, uh, this is this is this is amazing for us, and uh, we just want to say thank you, God, for just uh, uh, blessing us in in this week. Uh, yeah. I just want to give a shout out to all the. Um, uh, vocalist who are on the other side of the room uh, if you guys can just uh, give me a shout out shout out um, and the band who are here with us uh, uh, we we'll just bless them and and if you can just if you can just pan this camera to Mr. Mbarathi here I just want to say thank you so much Mr. Mbarathi uh, uh, for the camera is moving in three in two in one now, uh, Ambarathi actually has been hosting us today and we just want to say thank you so much for hosting us and having us uh, uh, do our worship. Now bring the camera back to me. Okay. Uh, I just want to bless you guys and, and just wish you a wonderful, wonderful week. Uh, we are actually planning to do this uh, every month. Uh, in fact, Pastor Kilonzi, maybe we need to do this every week. You never know. Uh, guys, just are in. A, this is an awesome, awesome time. We are not limited to a physical space, but you can worship God at the comfort of of our home so please let your friends know uh follow us on youtube uh follow us uh, subscribe on youtube you know follow us on instagram on fa facebook uh on twitter uh, so that we can keep you updated on when the next worship night is gonna be and and we're really excited for that so so uh god bless you uh remember our sunday services are still on you know uh this happens every sunday from nine in the morning where we have our kids uh services and then at 10 we have our adult services on Saturday, 6 p.m., we have our youth, our teen services. So please uh, check that out. Also follow us on social media. You'll be able to find out those details uh, there. And, and we'd just love to connect with you. In fact, if you, if you want to connect with us, we, we have uh, contact details that are going to be on the screen, I hope. Uh, and and uh, you can be able to get in touch with us uh, if you just want to be a part of us. We also have the thing that I've loved about this season is that we also have virtual life groups that have been ongoing. You know, church never stopped. Uh, when the physical uh, Sunday gatherings were stopped, you know, and I've enjoyed just meeting with my life group people, you know, life group, uh, uh, I shout out to you guys, uh, and, and I just want to say that, you know what, uh, desire to be part of our community right now. Yes, we've been asked to isolate, to social distance, but this is not the time for you to isolate yourself from community. You can still do that. We have an opportunity for you to do that. So please get in touch with us uh, on the contact link to the send us an email or, or with us uh, well god bless you uh, may you have a wonderful wonderful week ahead and a great uh, month ahead uh, uh, i can hear some people at home saying just one more just one more song one uh, more song. Uh, uh, riga can we give them one more just one more we can do one more sour sour okay so god bless you music team take it away put your hands together wherever you are Candy candy. Yep.
worshiping with us and now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore amen